What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Tuesday, July 6th, 2021. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the Rogue One, returning to Kind of Funny Games Daily, Gary Witta. My glorious return. It has been a while, right? I've missed the last couple of weeks for various reasons. You've been How working on projects, I assume. Oh, You've been right. watching soccer. You always got an excuse the, for why you come through. The the soccer's gotten in the way. Yeah. Um, other, well, you know, work things, stuff and sure. things. But I have missed it. Uh, I'm glad to be back with you and on a big news day too. Perfect timing. A huge news day, ladies and gentlemen, all kind of stuff we're all set to jump into. But before we do that, of course, it might not be Festivus, but let's have an airing of grievances. 20 hours ago, Gary Witta tweeted, starting work on a new superhero comic today. So I thought some of you would be interested to see the script for the last one. The Batman story I co-wrote with uh, Game, at Game Over Greggy for the Joker's 80th anniversary. Wait, there's a grievance here? I thought you'd be pleased. This is how I have to find out you're selling me up the river. You're working on a new co superhero comic. No call to Greg this time. I thought we were a d dynamic duo. I thought we were a team here, Gary. You know what well, I mean? I thought know. I was going to ride your coattails all you the way. Now you know better. Now you know better. I'm, so, I'm sorry you had to find out this way, Greg. But yeah, I, I used you and then I tossed you away like a parking ticket. You hate to see it. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> You hate to see it. What well, can you tell us about our su your new superhero comic? Huh? Nothing. DC, Marvel, other than, other than brand I'm, new. I'm, doing, I'm working on a. I'm working on a comic. It's got you know people in silly outfits running around doing things. That's about all I can tell you. Hmm. 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 Thought we were closer than that, but okay, whatever. You know what? We'll move on. We'll talk about video games where we still have common ground. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Nintendo has announced a new Nintendo Switch, and pretty much everybody's mad about it. There's a PlayStation State of Play coming up on Thursday, and Final Fantasy XIV has broke its own concurrent record over on Steam. We're going to talk about all this and more because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show at patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. Over on patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames, you can write in with your questions, your comments, your concerns, everything under the daily video game sun to be read here on the show. Of course, over on patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames, you can get each and every episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily ad-free. You can get it with the exclusive post show we do. And of course, you could get your name read on it. You could get a whole bunch of exclusive shows on it. You could get post shows for the games cast. You get those ad free. There's a million different things all on patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Plus the warm, fuzzy feeling of knowing you're taking care of kind of funny. But if you have no bucks to toss our way, it's no big deal. You can watch us record the show live as we record it. Just like Warthog 155 is next level. Nick is. And of course, 8 bit Louise is if you're watching live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. You have a special job. Go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong. Tell us what we screw up as we screw it up. So we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games, roosterteeth.com, and listening on podcast services around the globe each and every weekday housekeeping for you ps i love you xoxo is live that's right we recorded one on friday so even though there was a holiday yesterday so you could get a show today you can come listen to me blessing and janet all talk about playstation finally coming off the bench swinging for the fences and of course uh blessing and janet review chicory as well a game i enjoy but i have not beaten yet but they did Thank you to our Patreon producers, Blackjack. Today, we're brought to you by Purple Mattress and FitBod, but I'll tell you about that later for now. Let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. Time for some news. Four items on the Roper Report. A baker's dozen. Number one, Gary. A new Nintendo Switch has been announced, and people are pissed. Kevin, I gave you a trailer to play. We will talk over it while it goes, and I will let you know this news. So groundbreaking, Gary, that when I woke up today at my alarm, I rolled over, looked at my beautiful wife, and the first thing she said is, oh, you're going to have a good games daily. The Nintendo Switch family of systems is about to gain a new member. On October 8th, Nintendo Switch, parentheses, OLED model, that's the official name, will launch at a suge suggested retail price of $349.99, giving people another option for how they want to play the vast library of games on the Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Switch, parentheses, OLED model, has a similar overall size to the Nintendo Switch system, but with a larger, vibrant 7-inch OLED screen with vivid colors and crisp contrast. 
Nintendo Switch, parentheses, OLED model, also features a wide adjustable stand for tabletop mode, a new dock with a wired LAN port, 64 gigabytes of internal storage, they don't say it, but that's double, and enhanced audio for handheld and tabletop play. Just like Nintendo Switch, Nintendo Switch, parentheses, OLED model, allows players to play on the TV and share the detachable Joy-Con controllers for right out of the box multiplayer fun. Nintendo Switch parentheses OLED model launches on October 8th, the same day as the Metroid Dread game, uh, the next uh, entry in the 2D Metroid saga that kicked off with the original Metroid on NES. When the system launches, it will come in two color options. Nintendo Switch parentheses OLED model white set, which features white Joy-Con controllers, a black main unit, and a white dock. Nintendo Switch parentheses OLED model neon red slash neon uh, blue set, which features neon red and neon blue Joy-Con controllers, a black main unit, and a black dock. All previously released Joy-Cons for the Nintendo Switch are compatible with this new model. Additionally, Nintendo Switch parentheses OLED model is compatible with the full library of Nintendo Switch games. Gary, I saw my wife tell me, hey, it's going to be a good games daily. People are really mad about this Nintendo Switch thing. I rubbed my eyes. She explained it to me, and I went, okay. And then I read about it, and my first reaction was, let's go. Instant pre-order. I play my Nintendo Switch in handheld all the time. A bigger screen, awesome. A better kickstand for when I'm playing on a plane and I got my uh, uh, pro controller or when I'm sitting around uh, having a beer and I want it on a table. Excellent, let's go. Speakers, whatever. I usually have it on mute if I'm playing something without headphones anyway. This will give me the battery life, seeing as how I'm an OG Switch person. This sounded like a dynamite submission to me. However, people are pissed. Gary, where are you right now? Uh, I think it's interesting that you and I... um, uh, represent very different use cases. There's given that you can play it handheld, you can play it dark. There's all kinds of different ways you can play it. Put it on a table, hold it in your hand, whatever. There's all these different things that you see in the trailer uh, showing you all the different ways you can play Nintendo Switch. And different people play in different ways. Some people like to play in all of those different ways. Some people gravitate more towards one than the other. And you and I are interested that we do represent, I think, different ends of that spectrum. We both tweeted out today. I per- I said it, the, the new one's probably not for me yeah. because a bigger screen, given that I'm not, a ha- I'm just not a big handheld gamer. I've never been a big handheld Crazy. gamer. The occasional iPhone mobile game. But aside from that, like when I use my Switch, it is pretty much fused into its dock, um, you know, and, and connected to the TV. I very rarely pick it up and, and play it as a handheld device. That's just how I prefer to play. And again, that's the great thing about the Switch. It, you know, accommodates your preference, whatever it might be. You're the opposite. You like to play um, handheld. So for a bigger, better screen is a very exciting uh, prospect for you. For me, it makes almost no difference. Even things like the LAN adapt, the the idea that you've got like wired internet now on the Switch. I I already, I I paid 20 bucks for like a little USB dongle years ago that gives me, you know, LAN, you know, (laughs) ethernet. So... I, there's not really anything about them. I, I think it's nice. I think the black and white aesthetic's very cool. Has a little bit of that PlayStation 5 vibe, although I think it's more of an off-white than like a pure stark white. It looks sure. good. I know Tim. I saw Tim get his frothing at the mouth over the aesthetic. It's going to fit very well into his, you know, lifestyle, into his aesthetic that he's got um, uh, at his place. Um, very much for you, not for me. I think overall the reason why Nintendo has decided to do this refresh and make it this kind of a refresh, a, a bigger and better screen, but not very much else. My guess is they have a lot of data that suggests oh, there yeah. are more people like you than there are like me. The, the handheld, people really like to use the Switch handheld. So the inbuilt screen is a big deal for them. Making it bigger and better and brighter. And OLED obviously is the best you know, mobile screen technology out there still. I think the screen's going to look a lot bigger. Uh, sorry, I look a lot better. Going from 6.2 oh, to 7 inches yeah. doesn't sound like a big deal, but I guarantee you when you see it, you'll go, oh, wow, yeah, it does actually look a lot bigger because that diagonal, you know, width, uh, that diagonal growth is, it's it's a big deal when you see it slightly. Like the, when you look at, like, for example, the difference between an, iP- an, an, uh, an iPhone uh, and an iPhone, like a Pro and a Pro Max, sure. the, the specifications on the size of the screen don't seem that different. But when you actually put them next to each other, wow, one looks way bigger than the other. So well, I do think when people see it, they're going to go, oh, yeah, this is a much bigger and better screen. So for people like you that want to play on a handheld, st- play handheld style a lot, I think this is going to be a great upgrade. For people like me 
who only really plays on the TV, it's not going to make a big difference. Well, that's the thing is uh, I want to get into, I think both this and the PlayStation story, you're going to get some hashtag hard truths, ladies and gentlemen, about what video games are as a business and how it all works or whatever. Uh, but before then, I do want to read over from Kotaku. Uh, Mike Fahey put up uh, an editorial over there that was pe he penned that reads, the new OLED switch wasn't what anyone was hoping for. I'm going to jump two paragraphs in the mid where he's talk, laying out his case. Gary, he's on your side of the fence. Most disappointed of all by this modest update to the Switch hardware are players like me who use the Switch nearly exclusively in docked mode. The new display means absolutely nothing in docked mode. Metroid Dread launching alongside the new console version will look exactly the same on my monitor no matter which Switch I use. The kickstand? Nothing. The enhanced speakers? Nothing. The extra storage? Well, I guess that's fine, but for the sake of consistency, I'm going to say nothing. The built-in wired network port in the new docking station is neat, but I'm pretty sure my older Switch is going to fit in that new docking station just fine considering the new uh, console's dimensions are exactly the same. Instead, my new Super Nintendo Switch Pro hopes and dreams all hinged on the promise of enhanced power. We dreamt of faster frame rates. We expected support for 4K docked resolutions. This is what all the early reports that and supposed leaks told us. From the early 2019 rumors up to this year's E3, where the new model failed to surface, 4K was the one consistent expected feature. Hell, a 4K dock switch could have meant a full HD undocked switch. But no, we got the same 720p undocked resolution and the same full HD docked. Gary, this, I believe, is something we haven't really touched on, right, is where the unrest is coming from is the fact that the Switch Pro rumors have been reported everywhere. Here on this show, we went through Bloomberg's report. We went through IGN reporting on other people and all the stuff and the ball rolling, and it was going to happen leading into this This chipset. What is it, the DLSS or whatever? We'll talk about it here in a second, some of the questions. It w it, if that hadn't happened, what do you think the reaction? If we didn't have this rumor of a Switch Pro and all this stuff, what would have the reaction today been? Well, I made a tweet about this earlier today, and I apparently rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. I said, look, the reason why a lot of people are disappointed and the reason why a lot of people are mad at Nintendo is the same reason why people get mad at Nintendo after every Nintendo Direct, because we get all wound up in our own rumor mill cycle of expectations and false rumors and speculation. It's going to be this. It's going to be that. I made the point on Twitter earlier today. Go to YouTube and type in the words Switch Pro Confirmed. And look at the, and, and I guarantee you, the, the, the unending procession of bullshit clickbait videos. Nintendo's doing this, Nintendo's doing that. I've got the rumors. Even people photoshopping like YouTube thumbnails of them holding a Switch Pro that doesn't exist. It's all lies. It's all bullshit. It's all clickbait. We all understand what that rumor mill ecosystem is like. But this is when it actually, I think, becomes really, really um, unproductive and, un, and unhelpful. Is that Nintendo never said a word about what this new Switch was going to be. They never even said a new one was coming out. This was all leaks. It was all rumors. It was all speculation, some legitimate, some not. But the problem is, in, in the world of the internet, it all gets mashed up in the, in the same mm -hmm. thing. And so we, we were led to believe, not by Nintendo, but by pretty much everyone else, that we were going to be getting a 4K Switch Pro, whatever you want to call it, this year. Nintendo were like, we never said any of that. Here's what you actually are getting. Surprise! Here's, here's the, the completely unhyped, untrailed, un you know promoted we're just dropping this on twitter today and because right. it's not what the rumor mill said it was going to be we're all we're all disappointed at nintendo maybe we should be disappointed in the rumor mill greg um, miller with his you know low expectations for nintendo not because i think they're bad just because you know my switch is my rare treat at night it's the am i going to play my playstation am i going to play my xbox then there's the rare occasion of mario golf and animal crossing something i'm turning on the switch, or a trip where i'm going to use it in handheld mode uh, and to be fair mike also lays out in his article the use case of why i'm so excited mike writes over at kataku oh sure we get the we get the fancy new seven inch oled display we've been hearing about since march that's a market improvement over the current console's 6.2 inch lcd crisper and sharper Combined with the new kickstand as a, as wide as the core switch unit and fully adjustable, this new model is a huge upgrade for folks who like to play their switch in tabletop mode, perhaps while drinking a large glass of refreshing iced tea. Motherfucker, Mike, I'm drinking beer, and it's a goddamn thing I'm doing on every plane ride or when I'm sitting in the airport with my pro controller when I don't have this this what is it this fixture s1 i'm using all the time anyways back to mike and i'm not going to ignore what an enhanced display will do for folks when they play their switch in handheld mode but gary 
what's fascinating about this, and there's been so many, I, a, a lot of garbage takes like you're talking about, people who are just mad, all this stuff. But there's also been interesting uh, double downs and uh, not even double downs, I guess explanations of who Nintendo is. Kind of like you forgot who these people are, like in the song Forgot About Dre. Uh, it's the idea, you know, I think it was Brian Altano who's like, the, pr- the people who release six different 3DS models are doing this. I can't believe it, this market thing. But to bring into this conversation the first of many reader mail questions, and many of them were upset, I want to bring in kebabs. What's up, KFGD crew? Overnight, Nintendo announced the Nintendo Switch parentheses OLED model. What I'm wondering is, what's the use case for the Switch Lite? With the OLED model being a better handheld device with the large OLED screen, I personally struggle to see why anyone would get a light outside of the cheaper price point. Please educate me. Gary, you're a household that has a Switch Lite, correct? Uh, we have two, just why? like my BAFTAs. Um, oh, yes, so... <laughs> How many Game Awards you got? <laughs> It's true. I've never been a I've never been a trending gamer. Um, so, well, so, so with all respect to Kebab, saying outside of the price point seems a bit dismissive to me. The price point's a big fucking deal. How much something costs is a big deal to a lot of people, and there is a big difference between one hundred ninety nine dollars and two hundred ninety nine or three hundred forty nine. They, they say outside of the price point makes it sound like it's it isn't significant. It's significant. Price point is huge. Plus, it's it, you know it's smaller, um, fewer moving parts. You know, the, you know it, for for a kid, it's the perfect choice. It's 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 the mm-hmm. perfect um, choice for my daughter. My daughter does not need a three hundred dollar full size switch light with detachable joy cons we have one in the house but she doesn't she never even really like asks about it or wants to play on it she's perfectly happy with her switch light there's a reason why the switch light has sold a lot is because there is a use case there is a there is a market for it and i want to make a i want to make a bigger point about the market here a lot of mm-hmm. people today I, I think we live in this bubble right we live in this internet hardcore gamer enthusiast bubble on twitter on the internet youtube you name it here we are right now talking um about you know video games on the internet because we're enthusiasts we're passionate we live and die for this stuff we are not the broader market we are a thin sliver of the hard with a hardcore market gary's going into the high hashtag hard truths ladies and gentlemen this is going to play to the next one keep going gary i guarantee you the vast majority of the market for the nintendo switch doesn't know or care about whether or not the new one has 4k they just want something cheap and convenient and fun with the nintendo branding that has lots of games that makes them happy my mother-in-law loves her nintendo switch she probably plays it more than more than i do or more than my wife does she is on her nintendo switch all day long i guarantee you she doesn't give a fuck about 4k she might she like she plays it handheld most of the time she might be excited about the bigger screen again i think that's why nintendo went with the bigger screen because they again nintendo knows more about its market than we do i promise you and so they, they've looked at their numbers they've looked at what's selling they're like, you know what people want i think like the bigger if we can do if we can put our resources into any one upgrade a, a bigger screen is, is is what's going to excite the broader market more than 4k or dlss or any of this hardcore shit they they know their market they understand it very very well which is why they are just doing gangbusters with the switch right now and the switch light. and i suspect this new one will sell very very well as well you have to remember that when you go on twitter you go on youtube when you go on kind of funny wherever you go on the internet the kind of people you're listening to you me everyone in the chat rooms everyone on twitter everyone on youtube that's not the market that is a tiny fraction of the market that is so passionate about video games that they that po- they post on youtube and they post uh, uh in chat rooms and they make youtube videos that's it's a tiny fraction of the hardcore and if nintendo only listened to them they would go out of business they have a much bigger market to worry about and it's people that care about just basic stuff is it cheap is it easy can i afford it is it easy to use can it uh, does it have features that appeal to me 4k dlss ray tracing all this shit they don't they don't know or care about it and nintendo is smart enough to understand what their market wants which is why they are doing so well right now mm-hmm. And I think that's the biggest thing about it, right? So for the record, I cut out Kebab's PS on his question, which was, I of course understand why a Switch Lite is, but I think this is a great jumping off point for what we're talking about, right? The hashtag hard truths that Gary just nailed to be boiled down is, guess what? Like not every video game decision is made for you. And I include my, that's a royal you. That's me. That's Gary. That's you listening or watching the show right now. Right. And so in the same way, Gary's like, oh, like this new, the Switch parentheses OLED model does nothing for him. I'm buying that day and day, day one, right? I can't wait. That's something I've been looking forward to. I've been looking for an, a reason to upgrade ever since. Because again, I have the you know original OG Switch, right? 
which means I don't have the improved battery that was improved included in 2019. The battery alone in that machine wasn't enough for me to go through the hoops of going to GameStop at the time, trading it in, doing this memory swap. I was like, I don't need it that badly. I have a battery pack I travel with. When the Nintendo Switch Lite dropped, I was very much like, oh, that's a really cool thing. I don't need that. Even though I pl play primarily handheld, this does that. I can already do that. I don't want a smaller screen. I don't need I don't need the form factor. But I understand, of course, the Nintendo Switch Lite is made for children, right? Or people who are primarily handheld or one other system or whatever, but mainly for kids, right? In terms of you can't bring off the Joy-Cons. You can't lose them. You can't break them that way. It's, it's all locked into one system. Now we're here to this point where we're talking about, hey, for 50 more dollars, this is happening. Somebody like myself who's been sitting on the fence for it, right? I'm going to buy it. There's plenty of people who are in the same camp as me, let alone people are going to see, as Gary's talking about, mainstream. Maybe this is your reason to get into it. But the other interesting thing I do think is out there, right? Again, we're talking about Nintendo that redesigns hardware all the time. This is not the last redesign Nintendo Switch you're going to get. I do not think it kills the rumors of what a 4K uh, DLSS uh, 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 Switch Pro are going to be. And so then you get into this interesting thing of, cool, if they put out this $50 more OLED Switch, does that just become the Switch now? We see that 300 price point fall away, and suddenly you have 200 you have 350 and then when they do do a Pro, does it come out at 400 And that's the thing of suddenly you're like, well, it's not even a $100 upgrade anymore. Now it's pushing me that way when I want it because it's just 50 bucks more. Yeah, that's still a lingering question for me that I don't I don't know if it's been answered this morning. If it has, I've certainly not seen it. Are we now are there now three Switch SKUs? The Switch Lite, the regular Nintendo Switch, and then the OLED version at 1992993499. I think it, I, in an ideal world, they would have just swapped out the current Switch for the new one and said, This is the new Nintendo Switch. It's 299. We just yeah, we're taking the old, you know, we're gonna we'll run out the existing stock, and then this just becomes the Nintendo Switch. Now you've got Switch Lite, Switch. Switch OLED version. Um, I don't know. I think at some point, probably what will happen is the one in the middle, the the original one, will go away, and the new one will come down in price a bit sometime next year, maybe, and replace it. I think they might start phasing out that because then now now that now that the one in the middle is kind of like the awkward middle child. There's there is there is an argument for the Switch Lite. It's cheap and fun and portable. You Definitely not com slash you're wrong. I haven't yeah. seen any confirmation this morning as this is happening, but I would put smart money on it that yes, you're just going to basically see, I mean, see those SKUs sell out and then never, and this is over many months, obviously <laughs> sell out the stock of it. And then this become the thing and it's just there. And then you have to worry about resellers or finding one on the shelves. I would imagine. Yeah, I want to, I also want to make a broader point about the specs, you know, the, the sure. big thing today, like the big disappointment um, from a lot of gamers that I'm seeing is no 4K, no, you know, real upgraded internals. And again, that's partly because a lot of the rumors and conjecture and bullshit that was being put out there for months was that this thing was going to be 4K. Um, anyone who is greatly surprised or disappointed by the fact that it's not, I guess, has not been paying much attention to Nintendo for the past decade or so. Nintendo, it's been a very, very long time, many, many years since Nintendo cared about competing with other consoles on hardware specs. Probably, I mean, if I think about it, probably the last time that the Nintendo, that Nintendo was really kind of comparable in terms of specs was like in the N64 PlayStation 1 generation when they were roughly, they could both do the, the, the same bad, jagged, fuzzy 3D graphics. Sure. After that, when the GameCube came out, uh, the three, the, the original Xbox and the PlayStation Two were a bit better than that, and then the, the Xbox and and Sony started to pull away, right? And 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 for a long time now, through the through the GameCube, through the Wii, through the Wii U, and now the Switch, Nintendo has always been pre the better part of a generation behind on hardware. Has it hurt them? No. The Switch is incredibly, incredibly popular. They don't need to get into this hardware dick-waving battle with Sony and, <laughs> and Xbox. They, they're just off there doing their own thing. Guess what? We've got the Nintendo brand. We've got Mario. We've got the unique proposition of the Switch, which is, is it's a handheld that you can easily dock into your TV. They have all these unique selling points that are nothing to do with um, hardware. And I saw a lot of people today as well saying, oh, it's not going to, yeah, it needs to be 4K to be competitive. Again, I, I think Nintendo's already proved that they don't need to be compared to be comparable on, you know, a, a hardware internals to be competitive. The, that's, the Switch has proven that. In terms of whether or not they need to upgrade it kind of mid cycle in order to stay competitive, people are saying, oh, you know, uh, games now are, are, are going to chug on the Switch or whatever. It's just my own personal experience. I've never really had an experience. I, I've never really had a, a, a game on, maybe there are some out there, but I've never played a game on the Switch where I'm like, oh, this is chuggy. One example I can think of Hyrule oh, Warriors. Goodness. 
Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamity in split screen two player mode in the middle of a big battle with lots of characters on screen, it starts to chug. Absolutely. But if I'm playing like Mario Odyssey or Zelda or Mario Golf or Animal Crossing or any of the really popular games that I'm spending 90% of my time on the Switch on, they don't chug. They run just fine. The Switch is a console, which is it, which is just good enough to run all the games that most people like. And Nintendo have been the best at doing that now for the longest time. Let Microsoft and Sony, let them fight. Let the big console kaijus fight over who has the best trilinear flip-flopping and DLSS and the fastest NVMe hard drive speeds. Oh, well, our one loads half a second faster than yours. At the end of the day, none of that shit really matters. What matters is can you put games in people's in people's hands in the good games that people want to play that are good enough for the vast majority of people. And Nintendo has been doing that very well with the Switch generation now. Why break why why break a winning formula? Why you, you, I guarantee you the other thing that Nintendo doesn't like doing is releasing expensive hardware, at least not for the last few generations. The Nintendo Switch is is pretty cheap. One ninety nine. It's the cheapest console out there right now. And you know, they just, I don't think they have any interest in competing at a higher price point. I was actually surprised when I saw 349 for this new Switch. I was like, man, that's, that's a bit pricey for Nintendo. If you add 4K and other stuff on top of that, on top of the screen, you're probably looking at 399. Now you're looking at, you know, a, a, a digital PlayStation 5. You know, or, you know, it's a, it's a much more expensive proposition. I think Nintendo is much happier occupying a lower price point with lower specs that are good enough for most people. And again, they have been proven right through the, the, through the first five years of the Switch generation. Why change a winning formula? So I want to bring in Bander SN then, and we'll go from there, right? Bander SN writes into patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. says, good God, what is happening over at Nintendo? As you already know, Nintendo has announced the Nintendo Switch parentheses OLED version. Uh, this new version is clearly not the Switch Pro that has been reported over the last few months. It is missing key enhancements like 4K DLSS, a better processor and memory, but this is actually pretty close to the Bloomberg reports. What happened here? Were the Bloomberg reports completely a uh, complete malarkey? Uh, did something change within Nintendo plans to result in this more iterative upgrade? Did the semiconductor shortage and global pandes- pandemic, geez, sorry guys, uh, cause Nintendo to be priced out of better hardware, leading them to have a drop in the pro version for now? Thanks for taking my question. And that is part of it, right? Where I think, you know, Bloomberg is different than your casual internet youtube video right but it is that thing when we start with a rumor everybody starts iterating on it and then you have the twitter people and everything else happening over there right so i think that like you know to look back at these bloomberg reports it is pretty close except for these internals right i'm looking at adam bankhurst's article uh from march 2021 nintendo is allegedly set to reveal a new model of the nintendo switch with a bigger samsung samsung oled display later this year that will be able to output 4K ultra-high-definition graphics when in docked mode. As reported by Bloomberg, Nintendo is planning to unveil this new model in hopes that larger touchscreen can prop up demand for in time for the holidays. Samsung Display Co. will start a mass production of a 7-inch, 720p resolution OLED panel as early as June 2021 with an initial monthly target under a million units. Uh, these displays would then be sent to assemblers in July. For reference, the current blah, 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 blah. The OLED panel will consume less battery, offer higher contrast, and possibly a faster response time when compared to the Switch's uh, other stuff. The report also claims that Nintendo has decided to go with a rigid OLED panels. This new model is cheaper, flexible, yada, yada, yada. And it goes on like this, right? The, the rumored Switch Pro is, as we continue to drill down into this, right? Like, so far on the OLED part, they're there for it, and that's Bloomberg. And so then it's left of... Do you think that the 4K stuff just got mixed in? Do you think that'll ever happen, Gary? Uh, is that is, I mean, is there a Switch Pro one day? For, I mean, first of all, you just summarized the argument I made on Twitter this morning in a nutshell. Mm-hmm. You just said people are disappointed because this new Switch is not what was reported. Well, whose fault is that? It's not Nintendo's. Go talk to the people who reported it. And 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 made bullshit clickbait YouTube videos about it. And I got I got some shit this morning because people say, oh well, Bloomberg said it. it's okay. Well, guess what? Reputable news sites get things wrong as well. My problem my problem is not with Bloomberg, who I did actually think get it mostly right. The one thing they were right about, and the one part of this where if you actually looked at what was the basis of the reporting was seemed most credible because you know they can you can these days you can look at the supply chain and say, oh, Nintendo's just ordered you know, 5 million OLED seven inch screens from Samsung. You can, sure. you can connect the dots on that, right? That's not too difficult to figure out. There's going to be a new switch or something, something new with a, with a bigger screen. They got that right. But there was never any real foundation as I recall. I remember looking at a lot of these stories 
about 4K or improved GPU or APU hardware or any of that kind of stuff. What you saw, and this is where I, the reason I got frustrated this morning, and I apologize if, if, if anyone, you know, uh, saw, thought that I was talking about harassing games journalists. It was none of that. I was a games journalist for 12 years. I'm not talking about harassing games journalists. I'm talking about don't continue to support the bullshit um, industrial uh, complex of people with red arrows on their YouTube thumbnails going, I've got the new Nintendo Switch Pro in my hand. It's been confirmed by Nintendo. Here's all the specs. You know, this thing, yeah, we were doing this when we were eight years old. My, oh, my uncle works at Nintendo mm -hmm. in, 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 in the schoolyard at school. We're still doing it now, except now people are making millions doing it with the same kind of bullshit. Now we've got beards and we've got, we've got webcams and we're making million, millions, millions of dollars saying, oh, I heard a rumor my uncle works at You're Nintendo. Millions of dollars doing this? It really, really annoys me, Greg. I click on a lot of video gaming videos because I'm interested in video gaming. And I think it's also partly, it's, 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 maybe it's a don't hate the play, I hate the game kind of situation because the, the YouTube algorithm encourages this. The more bullshit your video is, the more likely they are to recommend it. And so I see so, I, I click on don't recommend this channel on YouTube so often because I can tell just by looking at the thumbnail that the video is a piece of shit. And those are the people that I get annoyed at. They, they propagate, you know, I, I understand it. There's good money to be made in getting clicks on YouTube and getting that ad revenue. But what I, what I don't appreciate is like saying literally anything to make people click on your video. I found like a dozen videos. I'm, am I right about this or am I misremembering it? I typed in Nintendo Switch confirmed into the YouTube search bar. And within 30 seconds, I found like 20 different videos going, the Nintendo Switch Pro has been confirmed 4K. I've got all the details. Click on this video. You click, sure. on, the, click on the video. It's all a bunch of bullshit. The guy doesn't know anything. It just desperately wants you to click on his video. But this gets into your head and it, it cre and it creates an atmosphere. It's like, wait, I thought by the time Nintendo launched something today, everyone's like, wait, I thought it was going to have 4K. Again, ask yourself why you thought that. Because a bunch of bullshitters told you it was going to have it. And again, I don't think you, Bloomberg are, are, are bullshitters. That's a proper news outlet. Sure. And, plenty of, and plenty of news outlets reported on this stuff. They got the screen right. I think it was actually interesting that nobody actually got what this actually is going to be Right. I didn't see any reputable news outlets or anyone saying, guys, I've got the real scoop. My uncle actually does work at Nintendo. It's just a better screen and a LAN adapter. And that's pretty much it. No one actually knew what it was really going to be. Nintendo did a very good job of keeping this under wraps. Um, but again, it's just just don't click on the bullshit videos. Just just don't. <laughs> so here let's let's do this then i'll boil the question down to joshy g before we get out of here joshy g wrote into patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says so with the announcement of the nintendo switch parentheses oled model is this the final nail in the coffin for what the internet dubbed the switch pro i think so says joshy g if i can take lead no not by a long shot as long as the Nintendo Switch is the primary Nintendo platform and there's no Switch 2 announced, even though I guess that could become the Switch Pro, maybe that's more likely of that could happen. I think you'll definitely still see rumors of this because, again, Nintendo is very clearly trying to serve different markets. And so if they can sell the Switch a bunch of different times with a bunch of different bells and whistles and eventually get to the point where uh, this all comes down to th what we've talked about before, right? Why do you introduce new hardware? Why do you introduce new versions? It's because you want to keep the momentum going, right? Like, what is it, 85 million or whatever switches sold? That was the last number. Kind of funny.com slash you're wrong. Give me the more accurate thing. Uh, clearly, Nintendo Switch is doing fine, but they want to keep doing fine. And they want to keep driving that number up. So you release different models to in, entice that audience. This is going to get me, but so many of you it's not getting. Fine, they'll want to get you. And not to mention, they'll probably want to fucking get me again when they do a Pro and it is 4K and it does all these things. Again, will that be a Switch 2? Will that be, a, you know, is it an iterate? Are they looking more like to, with the Switch to be something like Xbox eventually where it's like you're in the family, so you're getting different things out of it? I do want to bring in Jeff Grubb, of course. Jeffy Grubb Grubb from Games Beat. He tweeted today uh, in starting to answer questions about this stuff already and what he's heard. He tweeted, I still have only ever personally heard 2022 for a Switch Pro. And if it, if that still happens, I'll continue to speculate that it will have 4K output with a significantly more efficient chip with DLSS. Anyone think this is the last Switch from a company that released six 3DS models? Exactly. They're going to keep making models of it. So does this kill the Switch Pro? No, of course not. You're going to hear about this forever. Every run up until it's out, you will hear about the Switch Pro and what they're doing and how much COVID and chip and chip shortages and things like that did push things around. I mean, at, th at some point, you know, yes, Nintendo will release a more powerful console, just as they always have since the mid 1980s. Of course, that's the circle of life. Of course, they will. The only question is, will it be branded 
as a, some form of Switch. Well, I imagine it will because they've obviously hit on a, a very big brand with the Switch. I don't think they'll reinvent themselves and come up with something completely new. I think it will be like new Nintendo Switch or Switch Pro. Super, I always like Super Nintendo Switch. I think is a, is a, is a fun way to kind of harken back to the, to the grand old days of Nintendo. Um, let me let me just ask you. All this aside, people are saying, "Oh, this is a lot of people again." The sliver of hardcore people aside. that are very vocal on the internet this morning. This isn't what I want. It needs 4K. This isn't competitive. Let me just cut through all of that. Let me ask you, Greg. Make a prediction right now. The Switch OLED version, hit or flop? Oh, hit! Right, obviously, <laughs> right, <laughs> obviously. Me? It's like the easiest prediction in the world to make, and yet, and that's why all these people, go, oh well, this is this is no good. This is not what I wanted. You can just throw all those opinions in the trash because I guarantee you, it's gonna be a big hit. It's just just as the light. It's 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 the it's the same shit as before, but better. And again, for the for the vast majority of the people who buy the Nintendo Switch, which is not represented by the people, the vocal people on the internet, this is what they want. Exactly. And if you're a parent and you're breaking down or whatever, or you're somebody who's been on the sidelines forever and you finally go this holiday to buy a Switch, what are you going to do when you look in the, the window at Walmart behind everything, right? Uh, I can buy this old one, but what's the difference between this $50 one? The associate's going to be like, oh, it's got an Ethernet port in the back and it's a bigger screen and b better battery, better kickstand. Oh, it's better for $50? Well, I've already come this far. Why not do it? I'm now, there, there it. certainly are going to be people who are not going to be interested. In oh, this. I, again, I, I, as, much, as much as I'm coming on here and I'm sounding like an, some kind of Nintendo apologist or whatever, I'm not buying this because it's not for me. I, it, it, this doesn't do anything for me as a as a docked player. I, I, I guess what I already have a 65 inch OLED screen that I play my Nintendo Switch games on. I don't need a seven inch one. I don't walk around with my Nintendo Switch. And, and honestly, even if I if if sure. I did, I, if I was like going on a trip. And I wanted to take a switch with me. I probably would just take the switch light, just because it's lighter and more portable, and again, sure. good enough for me. So I doesn't think, this again, go back to the, this? Reminds me so much of the old PlayStation uh, 4 Pro argument that I was making it wrong on the other side of it, right? But like, cool, everything you just said, I totally get. But if your traditional Nintendo Switch breaks, which Nintendo Switch would you buy when you go to the store? I'm sorry, say that again. You broke up. If, for the, a if your if your normal Switch that you already have, not your Switch Lite, but your normal Switch broke and you went to the store to buy a new switch which one would you buy if i was in the market for a new one i would pay the extra 50 50 bucks for the for the newest one sure there you go and i and again, that's, I, not me, again, that's not me talking I'm, on you i think that your use case is 100 correct i get why you're not excited but i just think that this is yet another example of why why do this it's a long play and they'll keep selling units and all these things will happen and you get again i'm points. i'm not I, I always try to remember that i'm not the average consumer and so what I, what's, 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 of interesting, what's of interest to me and what I might be willing to buy or pay for is not what the vast majority of the market might be willing to buy or pay for. But I think there clearly is a market for this. Nintendo doesn't just like make this shit up and like and, and put millions of dollars in, into R&D and supply chain and, you know, they make their next big kind of bet for the holidays just based on a whim. They do their math. They do their research. They study their market. They know if they play how many players are playing dots versus handheld and stuff like that they they have all kinds of metrics and data they have concluded that this is the best play for the holidays and probably for the next year going forward and i think that i, I mean i think they're probably going to be proven right oh they're definitely going to be proven right and we will have to wait and see what's going on with it but I do, so I think, again, the, the one thing that i do want to get some clarity on is it, it sounds like there's going to be Again, I, I, I never like it when there's confusion. You go to, again, I'm just thinking about like grandma going to Best Buy or Target this October once they get like, once they get the new Switch for little Johnny and there's, uh, you know, the, the Switch Lite, the Nintendo Switch and the Switch OLED. They're at three different price points. She might not know which one to get. Again, not everyone is as- But if she's going to that middle one, if she's thinking about that middle one, why not just 50 bucks more? Yeah, and I, I guess that the, the best predict, the, the only prediction I can I can make with any kind of confidence is I do think next year you'll see that middle one get phased out, and the OLED version will just become the Nintendo Switch, uh, and then maybe next year you get like a jacked up one with more hardware internals or something. And that's when I'm mad that I just bought this one this year. Right, and exactly. That's, that's, how they get you. that's when I'm angry. That's some people today angry you. about their Switch lights. Uh, Nanobiologist wrote into you're wrong and said, as of May 6th, Nintendo has sold 84.59 million Nintendo Switches. So I was right there with my 85. Uh, but you know what I like to sell? Patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Of course, you can go there. You can write into each and every show. You can, of course, get your name right on the show. You can get the show with the exclusive post show we do each and every day. And of course, you can get the show ad free. But guess what, Jack? You're not watching on Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games right now. So here's a word from our sponsor.
This episode is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like taking a call on a train or bus on speaker for everyone to hear. Don't be that person. I haven't been that person for a while and I've been a lot happier because of it. I've been using ExpressVPN and it just makes everything feel more secure. I can just be on the internet doing what I want to do and I know people aren't watching me. People aren't judging me. They're just letting me live my life. ExpressVPN creates a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet so people can't peep on your online activity, which is great. I use it on my phone and on my desktop. Everywhere I go, I know I'm protected and it's awesome just being able to be behind ExpressVPN. You can secure your online activity by visiting expressvpn.com slash games today that's e-x-p-r-e-s-s vpn.com slash games and you can get an extra three months free expressvpn.com slash games next up shout out to honey we all shop online and we've all seen the promo code field taunt us at checkout but thanks to honey manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart i recently saved a ton of money on some acoustic treatment i got from my home theater setup uh over on etsy and it was great being able to see the honey guy do his little dance and then boom i saved like 30 dollars. it was awesome you can go to joinhoney.com slash games to get honey for free if you don't have honey already you're straight up missing out on free savings it's literally free and installs in a few seconds by getting it you're doing yourself a solid and supporting this show uh get honey for free at joinhoney.com slash games that's joinhoney.com slash games number two on the roper report state of play for playstation is coming this thursday we go to the playstation blog where the one the only sid schumann writes We've seen Colt's head spinning powers in action before, but this Thursday we'll get a nine minute look at Deathloop's time twisted world as part of a new state of play. The show kicks off at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. CEST, viewable on Twitch or YouTube. In this extended gameplay sequence, you'll see Colt use his abilities to stealthily sulk, no, skulk, damn, across rooftops, or go guns blazing to create a whole lot of mayhem. Lots of options available on Black Reef Island. In addition to this long look at Bethesda's violent adventure, we'll have updates on some exciting indie and third-party titles. The show, I'm sorry, the full show, clocks in around 30 minutes. This showcase will not include updates on the next God of War, Horizon Forbidden West, or next generation of PlayStation VR. Stay tuned throughout the summer, though, as we'll have even more updates soon. Gary Witta, are you excited for another State of Play? Yeah, I'm always excited to hear about new games coming out. Do we know what else they're going to be talking about other than Deathloop? Nine minutes of Deathloop, leaving us 21 minutes of Indian third-party titles. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm excited. I have a PlayStation. I like to play games on it. I want to know what games are coming out. Now, here's where we go, ladies and gentlemen, straight to Lucid Dream over on Patreon.com slash Games, who writes in and says, I'm excited about the upcoming state of play, but man, I feel like we've seen enough or more than enough of Deathloop. We've seen enough of Deathloop, right? The overexposure is almost turning me off to the game. Gary, two in a row hashtag hard truths all right i feel like i've seen a lot of death loop too which you know it would normally you know, if i was a consumer and not somebody who made content out of reacting to content what i would do is not watch this state of play however what playstation is doing of course is trying to launch a brand new ex- exclusive ip right and it's not you know it's time exclusive or whatever but it's ip right now right that if what what does death loop mean to the general consumer the audience whoever they've got to get as much information about this game out as possible to try to get you excited for it, to talk to your friends about it, or for your friends to see something that they heard about it, or maybe you've already talked about Deathloop, and now you get to tell your friend, hey, you're getting nine minutes of gameplay if you don't know what this thing is, and get them to go watch it. Like, we are back, similar to the story number one of the business of video games, Gary, where, yeah, this isn't The Last of Us Part Two. This doesn't uh, print copies on its own and get people to go buy it. You have to get out there and you have to market this game. So, yeah. I agree. I feel like I've seen plenty of Deathloop. I can't wait for Deathloop. I'm sold on Deathloop. I'm excited for Deathloop. But there's a plenty of people who still have no idea what the fuck Deathloop is. I, I always think these like double A games are kind of caught in this kind of awkward middle ground. You know, the, the big triple A games, you know, the Ratchet and Clanks, the mm-hmm. you know, Last of Us, Halo, you know, the, the big ones where there's a lot of expectation. The marketing machine you know they still have to do their job but it's it, it's not an uphill climb for them like the excitement is there all they need to do is feed the excitement um at the other end of the scale when you've got like a little indie game or whatever you know there's not a lot of expectation maybe it's a hit but if it's not it's like well you know there wasn't a lot of expectation in the first place but when you've got a a, a game like this i imagine there's pretty big team a lot of money uh there you know there's at least internal expectations 
at the studio, at the, you know, at the, at the, at the, the publisher to, you know, make people excited. That's, that's the thing. It's like, it's not feeding the, the, the excitement that's already there. It's like, you've got to create it. You've got to make people excited. Like a lot of people over a game like Deathloop, I think are just like, you know, sitting there going, show me something like, make me excited. You've got to sell me on this because I'm not coming to this excited. Like I would be for a lot of other games. You, you, you gotta, you gotta show me the excitement. Like you, and I feel like manufacturing excitement and selling a, 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 a game on people when they're kind of coming in like a little bit skeptical or not sold on it is, is a way harder task. So I always feel like those games in the middle of those double A ones where it's like they they, they spent a lot of money on it, but there's no guarantee that, that, that people are going to respond. Um, and we see these kind of games come and go all the time, right? It's yeah. it's tough. It's a tough sell. Are well, people excited about, about Deathloop? Just... Sorry, are people excited about Deathloop? Or I do think you, think you know we, an, we're back to the sell? business decisions of gaming, where I think the people who listen to this show and uh, are super dialed into E3 coverage and everything else, yeah, they are. I think I think there's a good buzz for that. I think it's something uh, really different, really stylistic, and it looks to be taking you know what Arcane did so well with Dishonored One and Two and bringing that to a more mass marketable audience, right? But it's to your point that I think you know you look at Dishonored and that was a similar thing of like people being like. Hmm. You know what I mean? Of like, I heard this game's good. IGN gave it good reviews, but I this doesn't seem like my cup of tea. I don't want to play it. I don't know what to do. It is so like to try to get around that and counterbalance it. You have to market it. You have to get it out there. And yeah, in the, the live chat here on Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games, uh, Edwin River. Rivera R one two one writes in and says, "People who don't know what Deathloop is are not watching State of Play because if they were, then they would know." I disagree, Edwin. I again overwhelming majority of course people are kind of funny reacting to it of course but again like you know i always go back to a long 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 time ago I had a uh a vidcon yeah vidcon uh panel where i was doing some learning about uh, youtube and twitter and everything else you know it was what at that time years ago one percent of your audience sees anything you tweet and that's why they were recommending we tweet about the same thing multiple times at different hours of the day right this is a similar thing where there is so much fucking information happening at any given time about entertainment that I think you could be a person who loves video games and owns a PlayStation 5 and could be super stoked about stuff, but this isn't your full-time job and your gig and Deathloop's lost in this blur of, I don't even know what that game is, let alone isn't Bethesda maybe a, a first party of Xbox. Clearly, this isn't for me. I think you do this, you come out, you have a great presentation, and even if we're the hardest of hardcore and people reacting to it aren't like stoked to maybe be like, I mean, I want to see more. I want to see more. I want to play more personally. Uh, you, you get it. You get a hashtag trending. You get people tweeting about it. You get people posting on Facebook about it. Like you got to feed the beast to try to get it out. And I'd rather see them right now overextend it, try to get it to more people. Cause again, you don't want to know more about death loop. Don't watch more death loop and you can step off from it. But I'm not to the point that Lucid Dreams talking about where the overexposure is almost turning me off to the game. It's just more I personally have already checked the box of like that's a must play for me this year. So I don't need to know more. Um, Death Loop aside, which may be a good game, maybe not. I honestly don't know. I'm again, I'm open minded. We'll we'll make our own decision, and that's the key. We'll make our own decision. And this whole conversation makes me think about like the broader issue of marketing and games. And uh, yeah, sure. I, I was a games journalist for 12 years. I spent years oh, yeah, dealing with PR, DR, PR and marketing people of, of all stripes. And I know a little bit about how PR and marketing works and you can go get a degree in it. And some people are very good at it and it's a whole industry. And you know, these bu budgets are massive. Like if you look at Hollywood, for example, like the, the marketing budget for a film is often as big as the production budget for the film itself. So marketing, Companies put a lot of store in marketing, but at the end of the day, I feel like in many cases, there's only so much marketing can do. And sometimes it's largely irrelevant. I can certainly imagine can, that good marketing can work. Like I can see when there's, if, I can think of many examples of good games that didn't get the attention they deserved because they were poorly marketed or whatever. But it's very, very hard to think of any examples of a shitty game or a shitty movie that did well because it had awesome marketing. It doesn't matter how good if if the if the if the, if the, if the product that you have to market is no good, mm -hmm. no amount of marketing can save it. And I've seen this time and time and time again. So you can do all the state of plays you want. You can do all that. You can you can you can send send you know influencers all of the um you know the charge keys that you want and you you can definitely get the game out there you can get it exposure but what you cannot avoid is like that, that day is going to come when the game comes out and the reviews hit and if the score is shit the score is shit and if people don't like it they don't like it and no one's going to care about the marketing at that point so the best thing that marketing can do is good or bad raise awareness of a game but if and they can help good games 
rise to the top and get noticed. But if something is no good, no amount of marketing can save it. Very true, Gary. Now, you want to talk about some good marketing. Number three on the Roper Report. Pokemon Go is a quote-unquote dream come true, according to Miyamoto. This is Cameron uh, Kacha over at GameSpot. Uh, or maybe Coke. Cameron Coke. Uh, Nintendo's recent 81st annual general meeting of shareholders offered an opportunity for those present to ask questions of some of Nintendo's top leadership, including the most important question of all, what are your favorite games? For legendary Nintendo game design, designer Shigeru Miyamoto, the answer was definitively Pokemon Go. Quote, I'm currently hooked on Pokemon Go, Miyamoto says. This game, which I'm playing with my wife, is a dream come true of playing a game with my whole family. I've been enjoying Pokemon Go with my wife and neighborhood friends for some two years now. The average person playing Pokemon Go in Japan is probably around 60 years old. And then Miyamoto laughed. Gary, I just wanted to throw some sunshine on our feed today. The fact that Miyamoto is out there wandering his neighborhood playing Pokemon Go and calling it the dream come true. You know what I mean? All right, what's going on? I know that you, your family, big into Pokemon, the console stuff. Did Pokemon Go ever take off with your daughter? Um, yeah, for about five minutes. And in fact, it was popular with the whole family. But you know, remember that we've talked about this before, Greg. Remember that 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 moment? There that was summer. a moment, right? World peace. When when you know you would you know, we would drive by bus stop and there were like a hundred people there like staring at their phones like oh that's got to be a gym or you know there's a pokemon hotspot there or whatever and you it was like a whole viral thing and it was actually some people like were wandering into like dangerous neighborhoods and stuff sure. and there was it was a, it was a whole controversial thing yeah but for like a hot minute pokemon go was like the biggest biggest thing um and then it kind of waned off you know because we have short attention spans and we move on to, to the next thing but i know it's sure. still you know it's not necessarily like in you know under the microscope right now it's not what we're all talking about it's not in the zeitgeist but it's still you know very uh popular um and yeah anytime miyamoto's in the news he always puts us any like, anytime i see a picture of miyamoto he's always you know so he's always smiling he's yeah. always got a smile on his face yeah, he's always yeah. seems happy like one of those guys you just know that he is one he's a real one he's one of those guys that he's a proper artist and he just does it because he loves games and he like you know my, like miyazaki right i feel like those two guys are two peas in the same part they just love the art and the creativity and they do it because it comes from within and they deeply love this stuff and they just want to bring joy into the people whether they get rich or not doing it i don't think they really care they're happy for all the trappings that come with success but at the end of the day it just comes from a place of pure love and that's why they're successful because it comes from a real place exactly for, fourth and final on the Roper Report. Uh, final Fantasy XIV has broken its concurrent player record on Steam. And let me tell you, it's an interesting how we got here. This is Darren over at GameSpot. Uh, Darren writes, according to Valve's official stats, Final Fantasy XIV has once again broken its record for concurrent players on Steam with 47,542 players at its peak. That new number has beaten the 41,200 fans who flocked to the game in 2019 for the launch of Shadowbringers on PC. It's worth noting that this figure doesn't include players on PS4 and PS5, where Final Fantasy XIV also enjoys a healthy and steady audience. As for why there was a sudden surge in player numbers, that's likely thanks to popular World of Warcraft Twitch streamer Asmongold, uh, who decided to try the game out for himself and had over 200,000 people watching him at one point, uh, while the Final Fantasy XIV servers filled up with legions of fans who wanted to meet him. This references a current joke in the World of Warcraft community that more players from that game are jumping ship to Final Fantasy XIV as players are unhappy with recent WoW expansions in Blizzard's current direction for the game. Quote, many people have moved over to Final Fantasy from WoW, and I understand why, as Mungold uh, said on a recent stream. Quote, the truth is that WoW's best release in the past five years has been its release that came out 15 years ago, uh, he said, referencing Blizzard's release of the of WoW Classic. Gary, I tossed this in there, of course, because I know there's a very, 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 very huge audience for Final Fantasy XIV. Obviously, I want to give them some shout-outs for a broken record here or whatever and the concurrence in that thing. And it's awesome that that game continues to see so much success, support, and people playing it. But also the fact that it's this WoW streamer that was able to go over there and bump up the numbers is crazy. You were a WoW player for a long time, weren't you? For, for, a, for a long time. I was in a hardcore uh, PvP raiding guild um in the early aughts uh on the kill jaden's uh server and i used to it was almost like having a second job i used to play something like 30 40 hours a week and you know we raided all the high-end content it was a very very big guild you know with kind of hierarchy and officers and i in the, in the end i stopped playing it in part because 
I, it did really feel like having a second job. The officers were very snooty. Like you show up for a raid, like, oh, why haven't you collected enough potions, you know, to come on this raid? You know, you're mm -hmm. you're, you're going to be put on probation. So I'm fucking, no one's fucking paying me to play this. Why am I treating this like a job? Go fuck yeah. yourself. And I stopped playing fuck it. Um, because it does get to a point where you can get like so committed into a game um, that it starts to feel more like work than, um, uh, uh, you know, it's supposed to be fun, right? And when things stop becoming fun, you stop doing them. At least I do. Um, so far as Final Fantasy is concerned and this recent explosion that it's had, I do think one of the more interesting and, and fascinating aspects of, uh, you know, the, the, you know, the current age of, of Twitch streaming um, uh, is, is how now that has become, I think, more even than the conventional media becomes the thing that can, you know, l l like lift or um, lower a, a game. We saw it with Among Us, right? Among Us was out for a couple of years. And it was just sitting there. Nobody knew what it was. We talked earlier about how good games can go unnoticed if they don't have, yep. you know, brilliant crackerjack marketing. Sometimes that crackerjack marketing comes from an organic place. The right Twitch streamer found it, which is what happened with Among Us. And now, you know, it, it turned into into one of the one of the biggest games uh, around. And we're seeing it again now with um, uh, with Final Fantasy. This is why. This is why now a lot of the marketing budgets and a lot of what the PR people are focusing on are less. The conventional out, you know, the the IGNs and the Kotaku's and even the kind of funnies, and they care more about Pokimane and fucking QVC and Tim the Tattoo Man and Ninja and Doctor Lupo and these guys because if they if they can get one of those people playing their game, that what that there's a, there's a there's a, there's a far there's a far more direct route to other people picking up that game than any kind of conventional marketing. So that's where the new marketing effort is going. We saw it with Among Us. We're seeing it now with. Um, Final Fantasy for sure. Like I, I installed Final Fantasy fourteen the other day because some of the people in my little Twitch circle of friends started playing. I'm like, why suddenly people play? I didn't know. You've you've educated me. I was like, why why are people in my Twitch circle suddenly playing Final Fantasy and trying to get me to play it with them? It's because they saw a Twitch streamer who saw a Twitch streamer sure. who saw a Twitch streamer who saw this guy playing it, and it, and it, and it trickles down. And yeah, this is this is you know welcome to the new world. You can get one of these top tier Twitch streamers playing, and some of these you know that some of these streamers are paid a lot of money. Play the even if it's a shitty game, they'll take the money and play it just to put it in front of their audience. And you know this this is how you market games now. This is how you get games in front of an audience. You get a tier one um, uh, streamer to play it, and sometimes that happens organically. Sometimes it's a paid thing. You know this. You know, this is all part of the business these days. I'm a tier. Um, and, you know, it's, it's just sure. what works these days. Gary, I'm excited to see what works next these days. See what game gets huge next because of Twitch streamers like twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. But that's so far away. If I wanted something more immediate, say what came to the Mom and Grop shops. Where would it go? Oh, I haven't done this for a while. Let's see if I can remember it. The official list of up and coming software on each and every platform as listed by the kind of funny games daily show hosts each and every weekday. Do, 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 yeah. Still got it, Greg. Still got it you up still here. Still got it, Gary. I don't care what Barrett says about you. Out today, Yeez Nine Monstrum Knox is on P uh, PC and Switch. A Plague Tale Innocence is on PlayStation Five, Xbox Series X slash S, and Switch. The Silver Case Twenty Four Twenty Five is on Switch. The Sisters Party of the Year is on Switch. Indigo Seven is now available on PS Five and PS Four. New dates for you. Swords of Gargantua uh, announces plans to uh, launch Tesseract Abyss 2 expansion on August 5th. Uh, Lemnus Gate PC beta begins July 22nd. Alone with You launches on Nintendo Switch on July 30th. Red Dead Online's latest update, Blood Money, debuts Tuesday, July 13th, bringing a slew of new unlawful adventures to the frontier with a new trailer and additional details arriving tomorrow. Creepy Tale 2 uh, launches on Steam on July 16th. My friend Pedro, ripe for revenge, a brand new mobile adventure of blood, bullets, and bananas, is coming to Android and iOS devices on August 5th. Risk System comes to Nintendo Switch on July 15th. If that wasn't enough for you, I got new dates for you in deals of the day for Xbox Game Pass updates. July 8th, we'll see three games added to Xbox Game Pass. Dragon Quest Builders 2 via cloud, Tropico 6 on cloud console and PC, and then UFC 4 on console via EA Play. Then three more games, July 15th, Blood Roots, cloud console and PC. I adored Blood Roots on the PlayStation 4 when it dropped. Everybody check that out, especially on Game Pass now. Uh, Farming Simulator 19 on cloud Cloud console and PC, and then the medium comes to cloud all on July 15th, like we said.
Gary, we ask people watching to support us over at patreon.com slash kind of funny games where you can go to get yourself into the questions. You could uh, get the show ad free even when we fuck it up. And you, of course, get the show with the exclusive post show we're about to do. Uh, however, you can also squad up over there. You write in. You tell us your name, platform of choice, and why you need help in a video game. I read it here. The best friends find you, and they play games together. Today, Parker is a man after my own heart. Parker's playing on Xbox. He's playing Sea of Thieves. Uh, his Xbox Live username is the Beagle 8 uh, That's the, and then B-E-A-G-A-L, Beagle8. Uh, that's all one word. I've texted all of my old sailing buddies, and they just refuse to hop on and play Sea of Thieves with me. Frowny emoji. I live in the eastern time zone of Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'm looking for some best friends to play Sea of Thieves after the 9 to 5 workday to meet Captain Jack Sparrow and loot some booty. Hit me with a quick ad on Xbox. I would love to play with anyone and everyone, especially some kind of funny squad members. If you want to play Sea of Thieves, a great game that I want to play with Gary, but he can never make time for me, go on Xbox and hit up the Beagle 8. Gary, make time for him. He sucks. I, man. you know, I, I, I'm going to stop saying it because it's starting to sound, I'm starting to sound like a broken record and it's a, it's a bad joke until I actually back it up. But I do now have Sea of Thieves installed both on my PC and, and both my Xboxes here. I will do the tutorial. I will educate myself. I will get Seaworthy and I will uh, play with you. Uh, you really don't so need to do the tutorial. It's very, very simple. Like yes. Yeah, oh no, trust me, I need to do the tutorial. I'm no, I'm very stupid. You, you're a great button presser. I've seen you. I seen you. I mean, some, I mean people, some games don't give you the option. They force you to go through the tutorial. Kind of funny games to go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we that. screw up as we screw it up. Uh today I was pretty good about going through and getting them as it happened. So there you go. Uh apparently the only thing we missed was Outrun 6017 says test drive unlimited solar crown was announced for September 22. Uh September 22, 2022. I can't confirm that, but if you want to trust that, go for it. There you go. Uh, we have a post show to do on patreon.com slash kind of funny games, where of course you can get the show ad free and you can uh, get all sorts of other bonuses and you can write in, you get your name right in the show and all that other stuff. <gasps> but if you're watching live on Twitch, guess what? You have some Master Chief collection coming up with Mike, Andy, and Nick, uh, and Tim for Halo, I think. So I don't know why he's in a separate parentheses, but I think it's Mike, Andy, Nick, and Tim all playing Halo Master Chief collection, but it's unclear on the calendar exactly. Of course, if you want to catch that Twitch stream later, you can go to youtube.com slash plays. That's where you can get all of our Twitch streams archived. It's fun. However, don't forget, Wherever you're getting it, you can get patreon.com slash kind of funny games, get the post show, get the shows ad free, have a great time. Tomorrow, your host is going to be Blessing and Andy. Thursday, it's going to be me and Tim. Friday, it will be me and Blessing. For now, we have a post show to go do. Gary, say goodbye to the children. Goodbye, children. Sleep until, well. Until next time, it's been our <laughs> push. <pleasure. laughs>